Hey there, golfers. I'm Drew Mahol, the Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, a Master Club Threat Second Swing. Uh, today it's a little bit chilly out. It's 50 degrees or so. Uh, that might I, I think 50 is being pretty generous. <laughs> yeah. It's chilly out here, uh, but uh, you know, hands are getting a little cold and maybe tough to grip a golf club. But we're gonna hit the shots anyway, and we're gonna look at ball position, uh, another topic that uh, maybe isn't a popular one to discuss and maybe isn't viewed as super important, but um, I think you know it's easy to, to see why that might be a big effect on golf shots. So uh, Thomas, give us first kind of why ball position is so important and then maybe what we'll expect to see some of these numbers today. Yeah, so the idea with wedges and irons is you want to compress the ball. Yeah. So to compress the ball, we need to hit down on it. So we need to hit down on it to create a little bit of turf interaction. So to do that, we need to have our ball position a little bit further back in our stance. Yeah. So with a wedge, we want to kind of ride it around the middle of the stance. And then from there, every club is about half an inch longer going forward. So a nine iron, for example, is half an inch longer than a pitching wedge. So for that reason why, we need to actually move that ball position a little bit further forward in, in our stance. And we'll talk about a formula here, which is actually pretty simple to kind of to remember yeah. with regards to ball position. But we want to make sure we compress the ball, cause the ball to get up in the air and spin. We want that golf ball to stay on that face as long as it can right. to give you good compression. Yeah, I know you actually have a yardstick with you here. So I'm curious about that formula and how that works. So uh, this will be a really good one. And I know I don't have a huge rule per se that I follow with ball position. So I'm curious to see if there's something that I could be improving. All right, so Thomas, what clubs are we gonna hit specifically today to look at ball position? So we're gonna hit a 52 degree wedge. We're gonna hit seven iron. We're gonna hit a three wood and we're also going to hit a driver. Okay, and now driver will probably be an interesting one because you know the other clubs, the ball's on the ground, a driver on the tee, I would imagine that will change things quite a bit. Yeah, it's interesting. So we actually just did a tee height video recently. Yeah. So it's important to get the right tee height, but it also is the right, have the right ball in the right position as well to create good contact. Yeah. So tee height is going to be very important with driver because you actually do need to hit up on the ball a little bit. Now the ball is raised in the air. Yeah, exactly. Well, let's get to it then. Sounds good. Okay, Tom. So today we're talking about ball position. I know you've got uh, a lot of thoughts and um, techniques for teaching that. Uh, so, you know, what is your general rule of thumb for ball position and how does it apply to the rest of the bag? Ball position is definitely overlooked. I mean, every club does have an independent ball, ball, ball position. A lot of people might just play their irons and their wedges in the middle of their stance and then just play the driver forward, essentially. Yeah. Now, there is actually a reason why every club should be in a different ball position location. It's because every club is a different length. So, for example, just starting off with pitching wedge. So, your wedges you should have your ball position right in the middle of your stance. That's pretty easy to remember. Yeah. Now from there, every club is half an inch longer going through the bag, through your irons essentially. So for example, your, for standard length for a pitching wedge is about 35, inch, 35 and a half inches. For a seven iron, it's 37 inches. So a seven iron is 1.5 inch mm -hmm. longer than a pitching wedge. So essentially, because the club is longer, we need to move that ball position a little bit further forward. So we move it forward 1.5 inches further forward. A lot of that comes down to compression. So with a wedge, we want to kind of hit down on the ball to compress the ball. Yeah. And we take a little bit more of a divot. Now you start going pretty longer clubs, you're not going to take as big a divot with, for example, a four iron. So you want to have that ball position a little further forward so you don't hit down the ball as much. Right, because you're trying to sweep it a little bit more as you kind of, your club gets longer. And so with that ball position forward, you're not digging as much as you are sweeping it and you're using the loft of the club to launch it the way I guess it's supposed to be launched, right? Yeah, that is correct. So at the other end of the spectrum, driver. Driver now is on a tee. You want to hit up on that ball to get yeah. that thing off the tee, so you essentially would have that ball position pretty far forward. So yeah. kind of like right on the kind of the left heel. Right. It's because the ball is raised, and you're trying to help that ball up kind of up in the air. Okay. So really, really important. So I'm going to quiz you really quickly. So knowing we've got this one, this half an inch formula. Yeah. So where would your ball position be with a six iron? So with a six iron, so you're saying it's half an inch each club, right? Correct. Move yep. forward, so it'd be two inches forward from your standard uh, middle of the stance. Position. From middle, yes. Yeah, that, yeah. Good, good memory right there. <laughs> so important to remember. So it's very important because we want to make sure we get good solid contact with every single golf club. See, I'm already learning stuff because I've had this idea that 
you know, basically everything from pitching went to seven iron. I've just, in my mind, I've thought, okay, that's in the middle of my stance. And then the longer irons, you know, would be a little farther forward. Yep. There hasn't been a rule <laughs> in my mind. It's just been, okay, this kind of feels the way it should be. But and now I have an idea and I should be playing even seven, eight, nine, a little bit more forward than center. Got it. Well, a good way to remember this, and I've got a yardstick here. So my shoulder width is about 20 inches wide. So essentially I wouldn't want to have my shoulder width about and feet width about 20 inches apart. Yeah. So if we're going to split that in half, we've got 10 inches. Yeah. So if you're looking at using a yardstick, you can pick something like this from Menards for like two bucks, or I don't know how much <laughs> they are. But if you have your ball position right in the middle of your stance, you can see it's right at 10. Yeah. If you move it forward, so if you have a seven iron in a hand, essentially it would be like at the 8.5 mark, that would be 1.5 inches forward. So it gives you an idea where your ball position should be with each club essentially. So middle with the, with the wedge, a little bit forward with the seven iron, yeah. you kind of go where forward. So easy way to remember there is just a, a simple yardstick to take a look and see where your ball position should be. Nice. Well, yeah, we've got the basic information now. So now we kind of get to get the data, right? Because um, if you have the ball in the wrong position in your stance, that could be affecting the performance of your clubs, performing or affecting the performance of uh, you know any of the data that TrackMan would gather. So let's look at that. Let's get your stock swings, okay. your stock ball position, and then we'll kind of go into maybe something that's a little too far forward, a little too far back, and we'll see how that changes things. Yeah, I'm gonna expect to see some quite significant differences in attack angle, in club path, and club face. Yeah, I would think so too. Just the natural ability, right? If your ball is like, for example, back in your stance, the way that ball is being struck by the golf club is a little different versus if it's far forward. Your swing path is different. So I'm excited to see this because this is, I've already, again, I've already learned something about this. All right, well, let's hit a few shots. Okay, so Thomas, you've got a 52 degree wedge. So we should see the ball positioned right in the middle of your stance, kind of at, as, according to the yardstick, that 10 inch mark, right? Yeah, let's hit from the uh, middle of the stance. We'll hit a little further back and a little further forward and we'll take a look at numbers. Okay, let's do it. Very nice. That was a nice compressed golf swing. So that was, you know, exactly how it should feel, right? Yep. With the 52 degree wedge. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna change this and we're gonna have, we'll do a forward ball position. Okay. It's gonna be challenging. So I don't know how far forward you're gonna put I'll, this. I'll move it kind of towards the, the left heel and just okay. see kind of what happens. All right. Extremes to kind of show some numbers. Yeah, oh, for sure. and. Uh, that's probably going to feel a little different for you, but... <laughs> My, I, it's a little cold this morning, so I don't, don't, hope I don't catch it too thin. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yep, thin. There you go, my fingers. So that was thin, you said? It was a little thin. A little yep. thin, which... Yep. You know, that makes sense, right? Because you're kind of, at that point, you're almost, it's going to feel like you're swinging up on the ball a little bit with, uh, with the ball for, forward in your stance. Now... Yeah, what you notice right there is I did not take a divot at all. Yeah. First one was a nice kind of clean divot. Yeah, and then, which, with a wedge, and I know I've seen you hit a bunch of wedge shots before, you're taking a divot, you know, that's several inches long yeah. every single time. I'm trying to compress the ball. Right, yep. and you didn't there for the reason of the ball position. Yep. Now. We'll go back in the okay. stance now, which we might see a large divot here. Let's see what happens. Still be digging into the ground. A little bit more turf interaction. Really yeah. interesting taking a look at that. The first shot I hit was dead at my target. Yeah. The second shot I, I hit started kind of a little left and faded. The third shot I hit with the ball position in the back started way to the right and stayed to the right. Yeah. It's like a little push. Yeah. So that, I mean, that makes sense though with thinking of the mechanics of the golf swing. Your club face kind of is still open until it's sort of square in the middle of the stance, right? So yep. 
you would think putting the ball back in your stance would have that ball start out to the right, and that's what we saw here. Uh, now I want to bring up the numbers quickly. Okay. See the uh, differences here. So looking, I know the big ones here are going to be like club path. Uh, they're going to be attack angle, those type of thing. And then direction. Dispersion is probably left, right, and middle, I'm going to guess. Well, yeah, that's that's true. <laughs> yeah, so we got, let's see, we'll go, what do you want to start with here? We'll go with the launch angle. Okay. Launch angle with back in the stance at 22 degrees. Okay. Um, forward in the stance was 24.6, and then your um, standard middle position was 26. Okay. So I think that could be due to the fact that you hit it thin. Yep. And that got the forward position didn't launch as high as your middle position. Um, Normally you would expect to launch maybe a little, little bit higher, but right. the fact that I got it too far on the, low in the grooves, it, right. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Wasn't even close. Absolutely. Now you mentioned dispersion. Looking on the left of the screen here, your back ball position did go out to the right, and it's pretty clearly out there. I think 10 to 15 yards perhaps right of target. The other two were actually right on or near the center line, so uh, which the forward ball position we noticed did have that fade to it, so it kind of started left came back towards the center yep. and then um, your stock swing by the way was right on the money <laughs> with the dispersion that thing is splitting the center line right now um, face angle your uh, the forward ball position minus 3.9 yep. so close like yep. we thought and so then, think uh, about it so uh, the golf swings on, on, on a on an arc essentially at this point when it's further this way that club face is starting to kind of release yep. over a little bit so that's why it right and you can see close. that because it's yep. Positive 5.6 with the back ball positions. That's a, yep. what is that, nine degrees difference? It's a nine degree difference. Yeah, yeah. and then 1.7 with the standard uh, ball or middle ball position. So, I mean, yep. you're seeing right there, that's a the stark difference in just the angle of the club at, at impact. So, yep. what about, uh, so face, to, so I was going to say, what about um, club path? Club path, yes. So, the, the back. Ball position 8.2, positive 8.2. So in to in to out eight eight degrees essentially. Yes. Yep. And then the forward one is actually out to in 4.2. So negative 4.2. Yep. So that is 12 degree difference. 12 in degree difference yep. in your club path, which now I'm interested to see the longer clubs here how much that changes because a 12 degree difference or I guess 14 degree difference whatever this is my math's bad in club path changes things a ton on a longer club. But this is just a wedge and we saw already the difference. In trajectory. Yeah, a longer club will generate more curve because the ball is traveling further. Mm -hmm. so it's more of a chance for it to get further offline. Right, exactly. Yeah. So dynamic loft, 31.5, but the back 35 degrees with the standard and then 33 with the forward yep. position. So once again, again, that's because I got that one thin. With, yeah. That's why the forward position dynamic loft wasn't a little bit more. If right. I had actually caught a little bit cleaner, yeah. it would have been a little higher. Which, and for you, you know, it's different. You gotta, that's manipulating your swing quite a bit to make sure you get that one as you would normally strike a golf ball yep. when the ball's that far forward. So, uh, already seeing a lot of differences here just in the ball position and the way um, the way the ball flies. So uh, There's one more that you uh, skipped over there that I want to take a look at. It's attack angle. Yeah, attack angle. Uh, we're down 6.4 degrees with the back okay. ball position. Um, the other two are pretty similar, actually. Yep. Uh, the forward ball position is minus 3.2, and the middle ball position is minus 3.6. Okay. Yeah. So, so exactly what you would, you would also expect. Yep. Back, you're going to hit down on it, take more turf. Yep. Forward, you're going to hit a little more mm -hmm. up on it. Well, yeah. Enough a wedge is always going to be kind of down because it's really hard to hit up on a right. wedge to start right. with. Right. If you're hitting down up on yep. a wedge, anything really on the ground, it's tough to hit up on the ball like and with a tee it's one thing when the ball's floating above the surface of the turf but yep. um, when it's on the ground it's tough to have an attack angle of you know above uh, zero degrees but uh, yeah let's get into now we got seven iron next okay let's do seven iron all right Thomas you got the seven iron um, before hitting a shot here do you know what your kind of stock numbers are with the seven iron in terms of you know the launch angle attack angle etc um, yeah, I'm kind of in the 15 to 16 degree range with a la with launch angle with, okay. with a seven iron. Um, yeah, so launch angle, um, attack angle is usually a, I don't, I don't hit really far down it, so I'm more of a, maybe slightly more of a picker. 
somewhere about two to three degrees okay. down on the ball. So they take a little bit of turf, but not yeah. a, a lot of turf, essentially. Tour average is about minus four. Just so okay. You know. yep. Okay, gotcha. So compared yep. to the, the tour swings, you're yep. a little bit of a picker Just compared. slightly. Yeah. yeah. We're talking smaller, you know, fractions of a difference here. But okay. Yep. Good to know. So we'll uh, we'll look for those numbers here as you okay. as you swing. All right. So ball position again. Seven iron. Yeah. Standard. Middle 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 of stance. Or is it a little further forward? A little further forward. There you go. This what? is where the change is yep. going to be in my <laughs> game because I had it in the middle before. But. Yeah. So 1.5 inches further forward from yeah. the middle. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're pretty dialed with your numbers. You said about three degrees down your attack angle was 3.6. Your launch angle was 15, which is about what you said as well. Um, we should mention that the weather is a little, it's a little chilly out here. I think we've said it before, but that's going to affect the distance a little bit here. Yep. Uh, so, you know, talking about face angle was 0 0.3. So just ever so slightly open. Um, your club pass was positive 3.2, which resulted in that draw. So yep. these are the numbers that I, you know, I know you like to see. Um, the distance numbers are a little bit shorter just because of the weather. But um, you know, spin at 7,500. You like to say this is the club times a thousand, seven iron, 7,500. So now you know we'll we'll go forward in the stance here and we'll see how this really changes here. Okay, sounds good. First impression is that was launched high in the sky. Yeah, it's really interesting. Probably really forces myself to try and get that face kind of open in my path to get myself a little yeah. straighter there as well. Because I feel like I have that ball position forward, it's just going to go left to me. Right. Yeah. yeah, so you're trying to straighten it out kind of during your swing because yep. you feel, as you come through, you kind of feel that that club face should close to the point where it's way off target, so yep. you're trying to keep it open. That's which, my reaction to it. Yeah. 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 Which, and you, you did that successfully. <laughs> what it's worth here. <laughs> So you have that high fade on the trajectory. Um, launch angle went up to 21.3. So that is a six degree increase there. Attack angle is actually minus 5.1. Okay, interesting. So yeah. that is interesting to, to note there. Yeah. Um, you know, your face to path is 0.9, or minus 0.9. Face angle is minus 3.4. So, you know, even with you trying to kind of keep it open, it still did close quite a bit more compared to your stock swing. Got it. So yeah. now we can go, we'll go back to the other side of the spectrum here with the back ball position here. almost like a knockdown. It just yeah started so much further to the right. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, your launch angle again is dropped well below, well, it's 12.1, so three to four degrees lower than your standard seven iron yep. uh, ball position. Attacking was minus 7.8. So I mean, I'm, I was looking at your divot and I could see you're deeper into the earth a little bit um, with that last one. And your face angle is open seven degrees. So that is a what, 10 degree difference from the up forward ball position right there? Yep. Crazy Those difference. Are, yeah. It's crazy, the difference. And uh, I'll look at the dispersion map here. I think the biggest thing, yeah, like, I know you're talking about club face and where, where the ball was kind of directing, but I think it's the path that's causing the ball to kind of start on its kind of direction. And the club face, yeah, it's very, very, very important because my path is so much more in to out. Right. You know, if my club path my face gets say square to the target it's just gonna hook oh yeah it's gonna hook. so it's, once again that face stays open because I'm mm -hmm. it's just trying to get that thing as straight as I can kind of mentally right. if you well. have like with your swing path and if the club is square with that back ball position I think it is gonna snap gonna left, a lot like of curve. Yep. Yep. yep and that's one of the things too is a lot of golfers I think struggle sometimes coming over the top with their swings which 
would actually allow them to maybe square it up a little bit with this ball, back ball position. But um, in your case, someone swinging it like that, it's going to hook if you happen to square it up. And yeah, that, that would take a lot of wrist action, I'm sure, in the swing to kind of square <laughs> that club face up. But yeah. your dispersion here, there's kind of three different locations. So your, your standard swing was, you know, a little bit left yep. which, with that draw. A little bit more of a draw, yep. um, You had that high fade with the forward position, which is right on that center line. Kind of started left, faded back in. And then your your back ball position is out to the right. Kind of, that's the trend here so far with uh, the back ball position is that that ball is going to start out to the right, kind of stay there. Um, it just feels it just feels stuck. It just feels like I got it's just I'm um, going out towards the right every single time. Yeah. Yep. The uh, height wise, clearly the highest shot so far is the uh, forward ball position seven iron. That's over 102 feet in the air. The other ones are hovering. You know your your back ball position shots are both. You got 78 feet and 65 feet on those ones. So yep. that makes sense, right? Um, it makes complete sense. Yep. Yeah, so what about club path numbers? What were my club path numbers with forward, middle, and back? So the seven iron f standard club path 3.2. Yep. That's pretty much me. I'm so, about three degrees in and out most of the time yep. with my irons. Yep, because yep. that'll create that slight little draw. That slight little draw. Yep. Um, when you moved it forward, it went to minus 2.5. Okay. So that you know the kind of a little bit out to in there to create that fade, and then the back ball position was 8.6. <laughs> So that is yeah. really like, I mean, I'm trying to picture, if that was your standard ball position, you had 8.6, you're really trying to sling a draw. Um, of course, in a back ball position, this is just for the sake of looking at and seeing the difference in the numbers, but yeah. So we're seeing difference. about 10 to 12 degree difference with the seven iron and the pitching wedge um, with regards to club path numbers. Yeah. With being forward, being more out to in, back being more in to out. Right. It's a big difference. It's a huge, that is. It's a huge, huge difference. Yeah. Yep. Now we can see three wood okay. and driver, and we'll. Uh, I think we're going to see some trajectory differences here quite a bit. Yeah, we'll see what happens. So three wood's very important because if you so you think about the golf swing, it's you know it's kind of on an arc, and ever the club starts to come up a little bit with the, with the drivers. That's how you ball, have your ball is just a little further forward. Yeah. Three wood because the ball is on the ground still and there's not much loft on that club. You got to catch it perfect. So you've yeah. got to basically bottom out right at zero. Yeah. Otherwise, you're not going to create the best contact. You might catch it thin, uh, or you might catch it fat essentially if right. you're not quite catching. So you got to be right on spot on with your three wood. Yeah. Well, let's get to it then. Okay. All right. So three wood, Thomas. Now, based on the yardstick and sort of the math in my mind, <laughs> several inches forward from center. I'm not going to do the math in my mind right now, but that's basically near the left heel, right? It's got to be similar to where the driver is. Yeah, just a little bit inside from the left heel. Yeah. Driver would be left heel because the ball is up on the tee. Yeah. Um, but with three wood, because the ball is still on the ground, you don't want to really hit up on it too much. Yeah. Because if you hit it up on it, you're going to hit it here, and it's going to spin and not go quite as far. So now, like, attack angle, for example, with the three wood, is that about at zero, or what's that out for you? Yeah, in an ideal world, I'd like to be as close to zero as I can with yeah. three wood. Maybe ever so slightly down on it. If you're hitting up on it with three wood, you are going to catch it kind of a little bit low yeah. in the face because the ball is on the ground. But sure. Okay. You're going to be, want to be pretty close to kind of neutral with a three wood. Okay. Yeah. yeah let's see what you got. Okay. better. Yeah, that was pretty good, Thomas. I mean, your attack angle was uh, minus 1.0, so, it's you know. Ever so slightly down. Yeah, just ever so yep. slightly down, and that's pretty darn close to that zero mark you like, so. Okay. Um, club path was minus 1.4, face angle 2.2, face to path, then 3.8, so. Okay. Uh, the face a little bit open to my path, which cause that one to spin a little bit more, but yeah. for educational purpose, you can see my attack angle is pretty close to neutral at minus one point, yep. and minus one. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Now we can uh, move that ball forward, a little bit more forward, I guess, it's okay. not a ton more forward. No, it's not too far forward. A 
and we started a lot further yeah. left. I was going to say that you, your club face was noticeably closed there at impact. Yeah. That thing started much farther left. So your attack angle is actually now up at 0 0.8. Okay. So that's kind of what you'd expect, right, when you move yep. it a little bit forward. Uh, club path was minus 9.4 face angle, minus 9.1. So really, Pretty really closed uh, at impact. Again, that's just because you know you move that thing forward, and then the arc that you talk about, that club is going to close, kind of as you swing, right? As you complete your swing more, yep, it's just going to close more. So, well, let's try putting it back and see what happens. I can't guarantee I'm... this will be very good contact, <laughs> but we'll try our best. It didn't hit too bad. Definitely started to the right. Yeah, once again, that theme of the back ball position, that shot kind of starting out to the right, it returns here. Uh, attack angle down 2.6 degrees. Okay. Uh, if I hit any more down than that with a three wood, I, uh, I'm probably going to take divots like the size of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's got to be weird to look yeah. down at your three wood being in the middle of your stance like you would with. You know, a wedge. Yeah, I couldn't put it back any further than that. It was, it was, it's, I felt like I was just going to miss it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, your club path was positive 5.8, face angle 7.1, so we're talking pretty dramatic shift because it was, I think those were both minus nine with the forward position there. So that's, we're talking. It's a big difference. Yeah. 14, 15, 16 degrees of difference there just by moving the ball position a little bit. So that's, uh, those are some stark numbers, and now we can get into some real fun here with the driver. Okay, let's do that. So Thomas, with the driver, I know you like to hit up on the ball, so the attack angle should be positive, right? Yep. And then the launch angle, what are we thinking there? So ideal launch angle for me is usually, I usually am between kind of 11 and 14 degrees is kind of my, my, okay. my launch angle with the driver, I'd expect. When I have it a little further forward, it might launch a little higher and a little back, it might launch a little, a little lower. Yeah, yep. and then club path, face angle, those things. I know you play or like to play that little draw with yeah. the driver. I'm pretty close to neutral with a normal swing with with my driver, with my club path. It's one thing I've always been kind of fighting is I do get a little bit left of it. Um, but we'll kind of see what happens here. So we'll see if there is some um, consistent patterns going through when right. we, same with the, the irons and the wedges. Yep. So. Yeah, let's, let's see what you got. Okay. What do you think about that one? I didn't hit it perfect, but I feel like I hit up on it just a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. I was. Yeah, that attack angle was positive 1.8. 1 1.8, 1 yeah. Did you maybe feel like you got a little bit high on the face? Yeah, I was a little high. Yeah, yeah. only was, asking because yeah. the launch angle was 15.3. 15. So okay. Yeah. A little bit higher, um, but that I mean the result is pretty darn solid. It's down the middle with that. Just a little fade there. Yeah, so. a little fade. So now we can move it up, which I think okay. would be like, what, in front of the left foot? Like, way up there? Yeah, let's go kind of left of the, see if we can get just a little left of the foot. Can I keep this ball with this T height the same height just for this for this test? Right. I would naturally probably want to tee it a little bit higher if I can, but I'm just trying to keep it at that, that half. Half the ball above the crown. Oh, well, that was it was pretty good actually. It's hit well. Yeah. Started left, but it's kind of cutting back a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. That's really interesting. The launch angle was pretty similar because when I hit normal swing, it was just a little high in the face. Yeah. But yeah, attack angle was definitely more up. Oh yeah, yeah. you you jumped that attack angle up by a couple degrees there. Um, interesting. Your club path here is minus eleven point seven. <laughs> Which, I That's, don't know, I know you don't like looking at I, that number. Yeah, I don't like that number. I don't <laughs> like the negative number, too negative, essentially. I'm a little negative. What was I with the, with the uh, normal swing? Was I a little bit left? Uh, let me see here. <laughs> Actually, I'll bring that up. Club path was minus 3.8. Yeah. That's what I've been fighting a little bit with my, with my driver. Yeah. That's why that thing faded. Yeah, yeah. right. 
sure. But, but even uh, still, it went from minus three to minus eleven point seven. Wow. So, <laughs> yep. That's a little different. I know that's right there. Why you don't tee it up that far forward? <laughs> yeah. So now we can go back in the stance, which can this is really going to be see. challenging with this tee height. So I'm hoping I don't put a dummy mark on my club because <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> I'll try my best not to sky this, but uh, right, yeah. for the purpose of this test, let's keep the tee height the same. I'm going to force you to head down on it a little bit more. <laughs> yep, there's that starter to the right. Yeah, that was very low. Yeah, minus. Minus 3.8 with the attack angle. Yeah. It was a chaser. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a definitely a, it was definitely Absolutely. a chaser. Absolutely. That is a, I mean, if you're willing to, on the course, going to the wind and <laughs> tee the ball way back in your stance, you just got to play it about, what, 20 yards to the left or <laughs> of your target and hit that little knockdown. But that's a dead straight ball flight for what it's worth. Yeah. So, I mean, that thing is, it's uh didn't really have much curve to it. It just kind of started out there. Um, attack angle minus 3.8, club path was 4.2, face angle was 5.3. So, those so are... I got my club path positive, which is yes. what I've been kind of fighting with the driver. Yeah, you just gotta, hey, you just gotta <laughs> move, move that ball back, a back. Bit. <laughs> that'll solve your problems. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, and then this is, uh, you know, launch angle was 9.7 there, so a little bit lower than you would like, which is again what we would expect there. So, yep. um, the table here, you got, there's a lot of, it looks like a lot of data, but it's only one shot each. But yep. um, I'll give this to you and you can really give us the breakdown here on ball position and um, help, hopefully help some people out there that might be having some questions about this topic. Sounds good. All right, Thomas, you've got the data here. Um, what are you taking away from, from this kind of test here? Uh, test of ball position instead of clubs, right? So um, what, are we, what are we seeing here? Yeah, so ball position really affects attack angle, club face, club path, yeah. and that also directs, causes the ball to curve more or spin more or go in a certain direction essentially. So I kind of want to start with the wedges here first and just talk about attack angle a little yeah. bit. So with the attack angle when I had the ball position right in the middle of my stance, I was like minus 3.6. Um, if we look at my dynamic loft, it was 35 degrees at, at impact with, with that. If I put the ball position back in my stance, we take a look and see what happened with the ball position back in my stance, it was minus 6.4. So it was like basically double in attack angle. Yeah. Really kind of dug down at the ball a little bit more. And uh, my dynamic loft went to 31 degrees. So essentially, I decreased the loft on that club by about four degrees. Yeah. So it's probably going to go a, fly a little lower, go a little further, maybe a little lower penetrating ball flight as well. Right. And it also started to the right. What was the other thing we kind of noticed mm -hmm. there as well? Um, so that's kind of interesting to take a look at those numbers. Uh, we also found really kind of interesting is when I hit the ball position further forward in the stance with the wedge, is what happened. My attack angle was very kind of similar. So it was, it was like half a degree more up. Yeah. Um, but we'll notice that my dynamic loft um, and the, the launch angle were kind of similar compared to the standard is because I caught it a little bit then right. compared to uh, if I was going to catch it, hit the ball with some really forward in the stance and catch it pure, it would launch a little bit higher yeah. and go a little higher. Yeah, 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 I know we noticed that it would be maybe taking you kind of a drastic swing change there to almost get that one, get a clean divot on that forward ball position because that is just, I know that's a little different for you to have yeah. that thing up by the front foot and hit the wedge. Um, so that, you know, that's kind of the, the explanation there as to why maybe some of those numbers aren't quite as different. Uh, <laughs> it's just because it was such a different ball position for you that you didn't get the divot uh, and the clean strike maybe that you usually do. Yeah, my club path was four degrees to the left with the ball position forward with the, with the wedge. Uh, in the middle, it was, I think I'm about three, yeah, it was about three degrees in and out, so it was seven degrees further to the left. And when I had that ball position, Back in the stance, it was 8.2 degrees. So essentially it went from negative yeah. to three to eight. So quite a big range right. there. Yep. Range of about 12 degrees of uh, club path numbers. Um, yeah, it's kind of interesting. Yeah. It's gonna cause the ball to start in a certain direction. So I think what we're gonna see here is if somebody maybe has a problem, uh, you know, starting the ball out to the right or their, their club face is maybe open. One of the things that could be the reason for that is the ball position is just too far back in their stance and they can maybe move it up a little bit 
and that could be, you know, at least a band-aid at the very least to some of their problems. And maybe that is the problem is the ball is too far back in their stance and that'd be one way to fix it. Yeah, exactly. Um, let's jump to seven iron. So seven iron, let's take a look here. The one that I did draw was when I had that club, the ball was just kind of right with 1.5 inches further forward of metal. Yeah. So the more standard setting for, yeah. a, for a seven iron. Um, that's because my club path was three degrees into out a little bit. My club face was zero, so basically it was dead square to the target. Yeah. But it caused the ball to have caused spin axis on the ball to the left, which caused the ball to draw. Got so it. that's why we notice it looks like it's just a little bit to the left of, of the target. Um, club path of three degrees. When the f when I had my ball position further forward, my club path was minus two point five. So it was five degrees, five and a half degrees further to the left yeah. of the ball position further forward. Face angle was still kind of closed, but because I was so far to the left, my spin axis actually was positive, which caused the ball to kind of go to the right. Got it. So that's why it cut back a little bit. Um, and then, really interesting, taking a look at ball position back, my club path went to 8.6 degrees in to out. Um, yeah. And then started to the right, and didn't really have a chance to kind of turn over. Right. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's the theme with those, uh, the back ball position, is that thing just doesn't have a chance to turn back over uh, because it is lower. Uh, for a ball flight there. Um, and uh, I think one of the things too that you mentioned when you were hitting the seven iron shot that was farther forward in the stance was that you were really trying to keep that face open before it would close dramatically and start, you know, 30 yards left. Yeah. You had to kind of work to keep that thing open. And so that kind of maybe helped with uh, the fade that we did see out of that seven iron. Yeah. Uh, let's take a look here at three wood now. So three wood, when my ball position was, I want to take a look at the tech angle here first. The tech angle with three wood, when I had the ball position just a little bit back from that, le that left heel, yeah. it was minus one. So we talk about in the golf swing, golf swing's kind of on an arc. It's, eventually it's going to start kind of coming up because yeah. you can't keep going down <laughs> yeah. for forever. Um, so you need to be close to neutral or slightly down to pick that thing pretty cleanly. Yeah. So having it slightly inside the, the heel was a good spot for three wood. Gave me an attack angle of minus one. If we look and see what happened when I moved that ball position further forward, I actually hit up on it. So I hit up on it at 0 0.8 degrees, mm -hmm. which is that going to cause me to catch it kind of maybe a little lower on the face. Right. Uh, let's see if I can see here impact. So bring out the impact location here, and as you can see, it's a little bit lower on the club face, which yeah. is going to cause that ball to kind of spin a little, yeah. bit, little bit more there as well. Um, and then, if we have the ball position more back in the stance, you're going to kind of comp compress it a little bit more. If we go back to uh, the attack angle, it was minus 2.6. So we didn't see major differences in, in the three wood. Essentially, I hit up, hit up on it at 0 0.8 when the ball position was yeah. further forward. And I hit down on it at 2.6 when it was, was, it back, was back. Now, if I was going to hit down on it, minus five minus six like the the irons with the three right, it yeah. would be trouble yeah that would, would that would create maybe a ground ball right if it's that <laughs> steep of an attack it would be uh, be taking some dirt and it probably would have carried maybe 50 yards <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so that's where things can get interesting with the three wood now that is one of the tougher clubs kind of to pick off the turf right as a three wood where you like you said that attack angle, that attack angle has to be that sweet spot near zero um, otherwise you probably won't catch it as clean so yep. Um, and then with driver, you know, out, out the tee, of course, very easy to kind of pick clean. <laughs> but when in the ball position is very far forward, I think we saw with yours that that club face was really closed just because of that arc of the swing. And then, of course, same apply or the inverse applied uh, when the ball was back in the stance. Yeah, so look in here. When I had that ball position really, really far forward with, the, with that driver, my club path one was minus... 12 degrees, so 11.7. Um, the face angle was closed eight degrees to the to the yeah. target. So my pace pace to path actually was positive, which if it wasn't positive, it would have been kind of the duck hook over over right. there to, to the to the right there. But I definitely started left, and it actually stayed pretty straight. It wasn't 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 too bad actually. It was decent decent shot. Yeah. Um, if we go to uh, the standard left heel position, my club path was about negative three. So I've mentioned with driver, I've been fighting that slightly little left there as well. Um, face angle was minus 1.2, so smaller numbers. Yeah. Smaller numbers is going to less, equal less curve, essentially. Right, right. It's going to stay straight. It might not be 
um, the draw that you're looking for, but it's a straight ball flight overall and it's in the fairway. Right? Yep. And then when I had that ball position back in my stance, uh, my club path was positive four degrees with face angle open mm -hmm. five degrees, which essentially was kind of like a little kind of right. push out to, to the right there. Um, I want to just kind of touch on the height. When I hit my driver in the middle, in the left heel position, I got a little high on the club face. Yeah. So I know it launched a little higher. You said it launched about 15 degrees. You know, like yeah. It's normally a little higher than I, than I expected. So I've got the hit location up on the screen here just to show that it was a little bit high on the, on the face compared to the other spots. Switch it to the ball position being further forward in my stance, got a little bit lower on the face. Yeah. It's kind of interesting there to take a look at those numbers and how right. ball position affects hit location. Right, because yeah, yeah that, that would make sense too. We talk about that arc. The driver is coming up off of the ground or away from the ground and kind of up towards your follow through. And if the ball's farther forward, you know, that the chances of that low club face or lower club face contact just only increases with that. And then vice versa would be kind of farther back in your stance. You might have a higher chance of um, hitting the top of the club face. Or as you even mentioned, I think before you're hitting, you didn't, didn't want to get a scuff mark on the crown of your driver because <laughs> you're kind of scared yeah. of that. So that's one of the things that's possible depending on where the ball position is for driver. Yeah. T in the ball position, forward's going to help with your attack angle. So when I had it on the left here, I was two mm -hmm. degrees up. When I had it even further forward, I was four degrees up. And then when I had it back, I was uh, four degrees down. Yeah, so I mean, these are drastic differences in these, some of these numbers. You know, we talk about the face angle, we talk about the attack angle, we talk about the club path. These are things that, you know, these numbers, now we're taking the extremes here. These are the sort of extreme back and extreme forward ball positions, but you know, there's not really a general, like a rule of thumb that every golfer follows out there necessarily. And this is like you said before, it's not something that's talked about as much as something that it, maybe it needs to be talked about, right? So this is hopefully a good indication of how much ball position does matter and it can affect the way that your golf shots are performing. So Thomas, thank you for breaking down all that data. That's a lot of data and a lot of numbers and measurements to go through there, but thank you for breaking it down because I know I learned something right away and uh, a lot of golfers can take something from this and apply it to their own game and hopefully improve their scores. Yeah, not a problem. I think it's very important to make sure you get your ball position in the right position. Gave you some great tips. Even something as simple as using a yardstick is going to really kind of help see where your ball position is.